All right, so next, let's discuss a very important observation when we learn the recurrent neural net. It is called gradient vanishing and exploding. So gradient vanishing and exploding is a very common problem we will face I mean, in training deep learning models. Not only for the recurrent neural nets, for some other deep learning model architecture, we also have similar observation for training the models. Uh, so what is the gradient vanishing and exploding? So, I mean, to explain this kind of observation, we have to do the revisit of deep learning model training with this backpropagation algorithm, right? I hope you still remember how do we update these variables in these deep learning models layer by layer by calculating the gradient, I mean, versus the variables. So we can calculate the gradient of this model, I mean, the north versus the variables, I mean, layer by layer with a chain rule, right? So the gradient is calculated by the chain rule. And some results we can calculate in the prior layers or previous layers can be reused in the following layers. Then we can propagate these, uh, these arrows from the top of the layers to the bottom one to save time. Right? This is what we learned from the previous lecture on the error propagation algorithm how and how do we train this deep learning model with this algorithm. Right? This is something we learned before. However, we never have looked at uh, how this algorithm will perform in the real world. Do we have any potential organisms with this algorithm when we train in deep learning models? The answer is yes, we may have some problem, I mean potential problem in the propagation process. So the first problem we want to propose here is about the activation function. I remember in the midterm we also have one question on this one, right? I mean for the activation function like sigma function, uh, when we do the calculation of the gradient, what would be the potential value range for this, uh, for this kind of activation function, right? So at the bottom of this page, we show you the observation on the sigma function when we calculate its gradient. So, I mean, the pink curve we show in this page denoting the sigma function, right? So given the input x, we can calculate its corresponding output will be in the range from 0 to 1 by sigma function, the pink line, right? Then for the x input, which is very small, then the output will be close to 0. And for the input, which is very large, then the output will be close to 1 instead, right? Besides the sigma function is curve, we also show you the curve for the gradient of the sigma function versus the input. This black line denoting the gradient of the sigma function versus the input. So if we can calculate the gradient, then we can draw the curve like this. So we observe that for the x input, which is a very small or very large, then its corresponding gradient will be approaching to zero actually. If this x is very small, like close to like negative 4, or it is very large, larger than positive 4, then its gradient will all be approaching to 0 actually. And how is the largest gradient for the sigma function? It can achieve the largest gradient when the x equals to 0. And its corresponding value for the gradient will be about 0 0.25 or 1 fourth actually at the largest value, right? So in other words, for the sigma function, its gradient will always be in the range from 0 to 1 fourth uh, as a result for the gradients, right? So from the net plot, we observe that I mean, for the sigma function, if we have larger inputs or very small inputs, its, way, its result will be saturated to 0 or 1 as the return result, right? And at the same time, its corresponding derivative of the gradient will be closing, will be very close to zero actually. Therefore, when we do the propagation algorithm, I mean chips in, it virtually has no gradients to propagate backward in the little work. So in this way, I mean very little, I mean gradients will really exist actually propagated I mean, to the following layers for learning the models. Because of this reason, I mean the gradient of this sigma function will decay very fast. All the majority of the cases, the sigma function gradient will be close to zero. Then it creates some problems for us to learn the model. So when we do the calculation of the gradients according to the chain rule, we will have normally we will have multiple uh, gradient of a sigma function, right? And if we time them together, then the result will be close, very close to zero actually. And it leaves nothing for the neural nets to learn in the propagation algorithm or the process. This is what we have when we learn deep learning models. It is a very common problem actually. And the problem will be much more serious for the recurrent neural net. And you may also wonder why. So the main reason is because for the recurrent neural net, not only if we have a deep architecture, at the same time, we also have a very long chain, right? So for the neurons, I mean, at the end of the model, it will receive input from all the previous layers. And if we look at the recurrent neural net around the it will also have a very deep architecture, right? Then the problem will be much more serious if we have both a deep architecture, as at the same time, we also have a very long chain for the recurrent neural nets.
A newspaper illustrates the problem for you I mean, for about recurrent neural net. We always provide you with a very simple case. So let's assume we build a very long uh, recurrent neural net. And uh, here we remove the inputs as well as the bias term. And uh, we just focus on the hidden neural representations, I mean, in the, in the sequential order, right? According to the recurrent neural nets, if we remove the inputs as well as the bias term, then we can represent the HT, the hidden neuron, equal to the sigma mode of WT minus 1, right? The previous hidden neurons. We remove these inputs as well as the bias term here. This is a simple verse. This is a simple case. If we have inputs as well as bias term, then the problem will also be much more serious because at the same time, we also have a deep architecture, right? Besides the chain. Here, let's assume if we do the propagation of arrows from the T primes a hidden neuron backward to T is a hidden neuron. If so, then we can calculate the arrow or the corresponding gradient of its HT prime versus its HT, right? And according to the formula we show here, we can calculate the gradient to be what? To be the product of W inside, we have the gradient of this activation function, right? And if we first move this W outside, because this one will be shared among different hidden neurons, right? And if we move this W outside, then we can represent the result to be what? To be W raised to T prime minus T this power, right? And at the same time, we times it with this product of this gradient, this activation function, right? According to the previous page discussion, if we define this activation function as a sigma function, right, we know its output of the gradient will be in the range from 0 to uh, 1 fourth. And the majority of the cases, is the gradient will be close to 0, right? And here, if we are times multiple such a gradient of the uh, sigma function together, then this term will be very close to 0, right? It will be a very small number. It decays very fast, right? In most of cases. And besides term, we also have another problem with this W, right? Because here we have W raised to T prime minus T is power. And depending on this W value, right? Depending on the W value, then the gradient for this term will be either very large or very small. If happen, if this W of this parameter happens to be value 1, I know it's very real, right? It's very real, almost impossible. Then it seems everything to be fine. And the gradient will be calculated based on the gradient of the activation function, right? However, in most of cases, it's very hard to have this W equals to 1, right? We can either have this W which is larger than 1 or which is smaller than 1. If this W is larger than 1, then the gradient, because here we have this power, which is T prime minus T, right? It is the power. If we have W which is larger than 1, then the gradient term for this one will grow exponentially very fast, right? On the other hand, if we have W which is less than 1, and if we calculate its power, then its gradient will be I mean, decay very fast, exponential in state, right? Here, if we propagate these arrows from the T primes, uh, this neuron back toward to the T neuron, then its gradient will be either a very large number or a very small number, depending on the W we have, right? Right. So if we have this W which is larger than 1, its gradient will be growing very exponentially, and the corresponding problem will be called the gradient exploding problem. On the other hand, if we have W which is less than 1, then gradient will be decaying very fast exponentially, and the problem we have will be called the gradient vanishing problem, on the other hand. So this is the problem we will be facing, right? We'll be facing. Of course, at the same time, the gradient of this active engine function will also cause some problems uh, besides W, right? Okay, so these are the gradient exploding and the vanishing problems we are facing in building the recurrent neural net. Okay, in this page, we will provide you with more detailed information or definition of these two problems for you for gradient exploding and vanishing problems. So for the gradient exploding, there is exponential growth of the model parameters, and the model weights may become not a number during training. So this number can be so large, I mean, beyond the representation we can have with four bytes, right? Then it will be not a number. And this model will also experience some problems in the learning process as well. So on the other hand, for the gradient vanishing, the parameter of the high layers change significantly, whereas the parameters of the low layer would not be changed much or not at all even, because the gradient will be close to zero, right? 
And the model will also never is the only problem we have some training performance in the very beginning or early stages. However, after that, then we cannot train the model at all. Of course, we don't want our grain to either explode or saturate, nor do we want to, them to die out, right? So we want to ensure the information or signal will flow properly within both the forward direction for predicting the outputs as well as the backward direction for calculating the gradients. So, I mean, this gradient vanishing and exploding problems will be very common. Also, it is also a very common problem. I mean, when we do the interview in the near future, the people will also ask you, I mean, if you say you know deep learning, then, the, then someone who do the interview with you will also ask a question, what is gradient exploding as well as vanishing problems, and what are the causes of these problems, and how to address these problems? You will have some questions like this about deep learning uh, in the interview. So, I mean, you can go over this page again, I mean, to uh, make sure you can, you can follow me, I mean, for describing these problems and also understanding the causes of these problems very well.